with that. So thank you for taking your time for my session, uh, Real World Machine Learning with TensorFlow and CloudML. I'm Kaz. I have been working at Google over seven years, and for the last four years, I have been working as a developer advocate at Tokyo office. So it's like an evangelist for developers attending meetups like this and speaking about mostly about machine learning or the big data processing products. And uh, let's start talking about the meanings of these buzzwords like AI or ML or neural network. There's no clear definition of what is AI or artificial intelligence, but you can think it's an, uh, what's the definition? The science of making things, make things smart. So we like to make them smarter IT systems rather than the, the ordinary existing IT systems, which is programmed by the human, human programmers. And one of the approaches, many different approaches, to realize the vision of the AI is machine learning. And I personally think machine learning is a kind of the paradigm shift of programming. Because instead of using the human programmers to instruct computers how to solve the problems, now you can use data to program the computer. So I think machine learning is a new way to program computer. So it's a paradigm shift of the computer programming. So instead of the, uh, uh, specifying the each logic, like uh, if statements or database SQLs, we can let the computers looking at the data and trying to extract certain patterns or logic hidden inside the data. And one of those machine learning algorithms is the neural networks, originally invented in the 40s, and we had two past boomings of the neural network in 60s and 80s, and this is the third time when uh, where uh, we are seeing the booming of the neural networks. But now we are seeing the real breakthrough in the technology because now we have the big data, ter terabytes of data, uh, the training data, and the computing power, like GPUs. So that at around 2012 or 2014, uh, we are seeing uh, there's something happening uh, in the neural networks when you put the, uh, the big data and the computing power. And neural network is, is just like a function in the math or programming. So you can put any kind of data, so you would get the output data. So not only the image data, you can also put any kind of the data, like uh, game user activity log, or credit card usage log, or e-commerce logs, any kind of business data. And you have to try whether the neural, neural networks can solve your problem or not. For example, if you, you, if you have a game, uh, application or game server, you can try using a neural network to classify whether a user could be a premium user for you who would be buying more and more uh, items on your service or a user uh, can be a cheating player who would be using an automated script to try cheating on the game. So anyway, let's take a look at how the neural networks can solve a problem by using this very simple double spiral pattern. This data set has uh, two dimensional data one and two dimensions in a 2D space. And if you plot the data point, then you can see there are two groups, orange spiral and blue spiral. And for humans, it's pretty easy to classify these data points. If you have a new data point here, this must be blue. If you have a new data point here, this must be orange. But what kind of the Java code or what kind of the C code or Python code you would write to classify these data points in the blue or orange. And you can replace this spiral pattern with any arbitrary complex patterns like the, uh, whether your game player is cheating or not, or whether your credit card users is uh, doing a fraud or not. What kind of the program code to classify these complex patterns? So that's where you may want to use machine learning or neural network. <coughs> and somehow the video is not working. What is that? Maybe I lost internet connection. Yeah, oh dear. I think I have to connect with the internet. Oh, it's, oh do you have a wired connection? Wired connection. Ah, okay. Sorry, I lost my connection.
Yeah, it's I can connect. Way. Yeah, it's just lost, so I can reconnect. Yeah. Yeah, my demonstration doesn't work at all with that internet connection. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I think it's, it should work. So this is a demonstration where we have the input data, training data, to train the neural networks whether the data point should be in an orange or blue spiral. And in the middle, we have the three layers of neural network. And at the right side, you can see the output, how the neural network thinks whether a point is in an orange or blue. So when you start the training of the neural network, the neural network doesn't work at all because it thinks the points in this area must be all orange and points in this area must be all in blue. So it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, but if you keep trying training the model patiently with putting more and more training data and computing power, you can see gradually computer trying to find uh, any way to classify the data points in blue or orange, just like humans do. So eventually you would get pretty much high accuracy on uh, classifying those data points. And the last result would be something like at 99.8% accuracy on classifying these double spiral. So as I mentioned, you don't do any programming on the machine learning. Yeah, you have to write some code on building those uh, setups for the machine learning, but the logic itself or pattern itself is not programmed by humans. Instead, you can let the computers try to find the best way to uh, program the computer by itself. And you can extend the same techniques to the higher dimensional data, such as images or audio or natural languages. For example, if you have the 28 times 28 pixel image, that means you have the 784 dimensional uh, vector. Uh, it's a, just a bunch of numbers with the pixels, like a black or white pixels. And you can just put those pixel data directly into a neural network so that the neurons in the network, for example, this neuron, uh, tries to check the uh, certain pixels, whether it's a black or white, to calculate the probability uh, if the image is in is eight digit eight or not. So it's a very simple uh, mechanics uh, running inside the neural networks. But if you have the multiple layers of neural networks, that is so-called deep neural network, then you would see something amazing could be happening in the neural network. So if you have like a 40 or 80 layers between the input and output data, yeah, at Google, we are, for the production, we are using the uh, inception model, which uses the 40 or 80 layers between the input and the output. Then you'd see very high accuracy on recognizing an object in the image. So the neur neurons inside the lower layers would be trained to recognize things like edges or patterns. Neurons in the middle layers would be able to recognize eyes or nose of animals. Uh, neurons in the higher layers can be smart enough to recognize dog snout or cat leg. And eventually, you'd have a very smart neuron that could recognize laboratory retriever or tiger cat, just like humans do. So this is how deep neural network works. And Google has been using this technology for implementing many different Google services. For example, if you are using Google search, then you mean uh, that means you are using deep learning from Google every day. Because in 2015, we have introduced deep learning algorithms for ranking the, the search result of Google search. And we have been using the deep learning at over 100 production projects inside Google. So it's not a, a hype or buzzword anymore. Uh, deep learning for Google is a proven production quality technology that is a very important part of the Google services already. And now we are trying to externalize the power of the deep learning with the external developers and customers. And we provide three different kinds of the services, ML APIs and AutoML, which is a pretty new product, and TensorFlow uh, that could be running on machine learning engine on the cloud. So let's take a look at the, each product in details. ML API is the easiest way to get started with the machine learning. So you don't have to have any machine learning expertise or knowledge or experience. All you have to do is upload your own image, audio, or the text data to the API, and you'll be receiving the result within a few seconds. So if you go to the product page of Cloud Vision API, then you have the Try the API box in the product page. 
Anyone can try the API without signing up or spending any money. Just drag and drop your own images from local computer. So for example, if you drop the sheep dog image, then yeah, it should be recognized as a dog or mama, not mop or things like that. It looks like mop, but it's a dog. Okay. And if you go to the product page for speech recognition, speech API, you can just speak to the microphone of your laptop to try using the API by choosing the one language from the 20 different languages, like English, or Mandarin, or Japanese. And it can recognize the, your voice in real time, just like uh, you, can, you do with the uh, Google Home smart speakers or the Android devices. Then you can copy and paste the recognized text and put the text into the another API, natural language API, to understand deeper about the, uh, this, the meanings of the text. You can just click the analyze button, so you'll be receiving the result of, of the entity analysis to find out product names or company names or locations or sentiment to find out whether the sen sentence is talking about positive or negative or syntactic analysis, syntactic analysis for the uh, analyzing part of speech of each word, verb or the noun or adjective. So that's so easy. You don't have to hire expensive data scientists to do, to do things like that. But this API cannot solve all the problems. These are all pre-trained models. That means you cannot customize the, the model for your own uh, use cases. To do so, uh, then you have to hire expensive data scientists uh, to do the uh, data pre-processing, design the ML model, uh, tuning the, the hyperparameter tuning, uh, evaluation, deployment, and you have to continuously monitor and train the model all the time. So that would take like tens of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. So we are trying to mitigate this kind of the burden for building the customized ML model. To do so, so we provide a new product called AutoML. The first product is AutoML Vision, a customizable machine learning model for object recognition. So all you have to do is collect all the training data image files uploaded to the Google Cloud and push the train button on the, the AutoML. So let's take a look at the video. Let's say you're a geologist and want to train a model to identify different types of clouds, like cumulus, cumulonimbus, or stratus, to predict upcoming weather patterns or flight plans. If you tried this with the Vision API, here are the labels you'd get back. It wasn't trained specifically to identify different types of clouds. What if you want to train a model to classify images specific to your data set without writing model code? Cloud AutoML Vision lets businesses and developers with limited machine learning expertise train custom vision models for their own use cases. Developers can upload their own labeled or unlabeled data set, train and manage their models, and use those models directly from the cloud to make predictions. Let's take a look at the AutoML UI. Begin by uploading your images to Cloud AutoML. Then, press the Train button to train a custom model on your image data set. When training completes, analysis and stats of the model quality are available directly in the AutoML UI. So that was so easy. So you don't have to write any code for trying this out. So the end result is the API, REST API you can access, so you can uh, ask some IT vendors to build a whole ML system without using the expertise of machine learning uh, expert or data scientist. And this, uh, here's a very interesting use case of the classification, classifying ramen bowls. This is actually done by a serious data scientist in Japan, and he collected 45,000 pictures of the ramen bowls made by Ramen Zero branches. Ramen Zero is one of the popular ramen franchises in Jap Japan. They have 41 branches. And they, those balls are, looks the same, but actually they are made by a different branch, different shop of the 41 branches. And this AutoML model can classify the uh, branches at 95 accuracy, 95% accuracy. So we cannot do th these things, but uh, computers can do that. So now the performance of the computer are exceeding uh, uh, yeah, from the, computer, uh, the humans. Mercury is uh, one of the popular selling app in Japan, and uh, they have been trying to build a machine learning model to classify the brand names of the product, like a Gucci or Chanel, 
and the, uh, the past result was 70 75% accuracy with their own machine learning model. But when they tried the auto ML, they were able to get 90% accuracy just by clicking the training button without any expertise of machine learning data scientists. And they are waiting for the, the uh, public uh, beta release of the product to replace the existing model with the auto ML. So that's how auto ML and ML API works. And, but still, there are some cases where you may want to build the machine learning model from scratch with data scientists. So that's where you, you want to use the TensorFlow, which is an open source tool for building your own model from scratch. This has been used inside Google uh, for building any new machine learning or AI services at Google, and we have open sourced in November 2015. And it's not so hard to build your own model with TensorFlow. You have to write uh, maybe tens of Python code to define the neural network graph like this with the Python, like um, the math model with the data and weights, things like that, or specifying the optimizer for the training the model. And this is the demonstration I have created with my son last summer to show how easy to use the TensorFlow. This is a so-called rock, paper, scissors machine with globe with three sensors on it. So each sensor uh, senses the position of the fingers so that the TensorFlow model can detect whether it's a uh, rock or paper or scissors. But it's a toy demonstration. But still, uh, that's very interesting because you can understand why the machine learning could be valuable for your everyday programming. So what it is doing is collecting the globe sensor data like this. And what TensorFlow is doing is the uh, conversion or transformation of the input data to the expected output results. In this case, we want to get the probability of the rock, paper, or scissors based on the position of the fingers. So what I have done is uh, collected 800 position of the sensor data uh, with the labels whether it was a rock or paper or scissors. So that the most important part, the transformation here, is automatically done by the TensorFlow. So you don't have to do any programming to implement the transformation part. So this is the idea how, why the machine learning could be useful for the ability programming or any kind of the programming. And once you have defined your model with TensorFlow, you can run it on your Mac or Windows or GPU from NVIDIA or tens or hundreds of GPU in the cloud without thinking about the scalability. Because we take care of the scalability, scalable and uh, available uh, the deployment of the training and prediction uh, infrastructure by ourselves. And also, you, once you have trained your model, with TensorFlow, you can bring the model into the smaller devices like smartphones, iOS, Android, or Raspberry Pi, so that you can have the smartphones to take photos to recognize the object in it, or you can have the Raspberry Pi to detect certain patterns from the IoT sensor data. We even developed our own processor called the TPU, or Tensor Processing Unit, that runs the uh, TensorFlow processing inside it. And the, that is almost equivalent to the supercomputer performance, uh, which is 11.5 petaflops. So you can say that Google has been developing their own the supercomputer just for building the uh, AI or neural network infrastructure. So TensorFlow is the most popular framework with those benefits. And many different companies like NVIDIA, Dropbox, eBay, Coca-Cola has been using TensorFlow uh, for production or POC use cases. Even these cucumber farmers are using TensorFlow. Uh, there's a guy, the son, Makoto-san, uh, who quitted his company as an engineer and started helping his parents cucumber farming two or three years ago. And he found out that most tedious task for the cucumber farmer is classifying cucumbers. His mother spent eight hours a day just for classifying each cucumber by looking at its shape, whether it's straight or bended, or whether how, what kind of color it has, or what's the texture of the, uh, its skin, to classify these cucumbers into nine different uh, uh, classes. And he really didn't want to help that. Instead, he downloaded TensorFlow and uh, took 9,000 photographs of the cucumber and trained the model so that he was able to build his own cucumber sorter by himself. He only spent 1,500 bucks to build the whole system with Raspberry Pi. So now you don't have to hire any expensive data scientists or IT vendors to build a million dollar systems for this kind of classification with high quality. So 
So now we are seeing the real democratization of the machine learning or deep learning with the open source tool. So uh, many companies have started to bring this technology into the real world production systems like Airbus, AXA, SMXG, Coca-Cola, Kipi. For example, this is a global fishing watch project, uh, which is a project for, for preventing overfishing in oceans. They are collecting the real-time GPS location of the 200,000 vessels, ships in each ocean, and storing everything on the Google Cloud storage, and then using the uh, TensorFlow running on Google Cloud to extract certain patterns of movement of each ship, so that you can easily find out whether each ship is doing a trawl fishing or long line fishing or percent fishing by looking at the patterns at high accuracy. So you can easily count how many fishes in each area. QP is the one of the major food manufacturers in Japan. They have been trying out uh, TensorFlow image recognition on their food manufacturing pr uh, plant for the baby food. They want to find out the bad production on, on the diced potato the, the malformed potatoes or bat uh, potato cube with the bat color, and the existing image recognition system didn't work. So they tried the TensorFlow, uh, but uh, then th they were able to get a really high accuracy that can replace the human workers. So this is the real the POC system. So you can hear the sound. So it sounds like Super Mario Brothers, but uh, it's not. Actually, this, each bell tells you the position on the belt conveyor where you will have the bad potatoes. So summary, so we provide three different kinds of the products and open source tool, like a machine learning APIs, AutoML, and TensorFlow, which is an open source tool. So everything is all about democratizing the power of the machine learning. We want to have everybody uh, using the machine learning. So the most important, the variable, uh, point of for the Google ML solution is the community and the ecosystem. The number of the developers for the TensorFlow machine learning API is growing and growing. So it, it's so easy to find the best partner or vendor or developers for you to provide the real world solution uh, from the community or ecosystem. So that's it. Thank you so much.